Guys, some of you think I drive a tractor wrong. You brought it up in a recent video. I've shown it in a few other videos, but is it really a problem what I'm doing? So we're bringing you back to the scene of the crime right here is where that video was shot. But it's not the first time. I'm guilty of this happening over and over with a bucket, with a snow pusher, with a grapple. I think some of you guys are too. So what am I talking about? We're talking about when these front two tires come up off the ground when you're driving forward with your bucket, with your pusher, with your grapple. What good is paying for four wheel drive if these front two tires aren't making contact? Guys, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. We got a set of three inch spacers on our 4720. They're gonna make a big difference in stability on your tractor. So if you are feeling tippy side to side, make sure you check out Bora. Now, if you like learning about tractors, seeing projects in action, maybe even an occasional giveaway, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. We have over 450 videos and counting. We can keep you busy for a while. And if you own a tractor and wanna get something for the three point hitch or the front end loader, we can help you with that. Make Make sure you check out Goodworks Tractors. We ship all over the country and have a great, unique assortment, including some deals you won't find anywhere else. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the problem at hand, which is, let's just use a bucket for example. Now let's say we're driving forward and we are scraping down to the ground, trying to maybe move a pile of dirt forward like I was doing last week, or maybe we're trying to scoop into a pile and then pick it up and move it around. Well, when you have your loader all the way down, sometimes even if your bucket is perfectly flat and level with the ground, you can actually push down and get your front tires off of the ground. And so when that happens, you're not in a static position, right? You're trying to move forward or maybe turn or something else is going on. And if your front tires are off the ground, well, number one, you're not gonna have that ability to steer or turn and go where you need to go. But number two, you're losing a lot of power. Now, if we use my tractor as an example, I have a lot of weight back here. I've got about 1,200 pounds of liquid ballast inside the rear tires. We've got another 600 pounds of wheel weights on here. And then typically you're gonna have something hanging off that three-point hitch. And most of your power is gonna come from the rear end of the tractor, all right? But if your front end is raised up and off the ground, well, it's putting everything in an awkward position, right? That's not typically how uh, these engineers are designing the tractors and the equipment to be used is with the back end way up and the loader down here and you have to adjust the front end uh, angle of the bucket or the grapple or whatever it is to make even smooth contact as well. It just puts everything in an awkward situation. However, I think that matters sometimes and other times it doesn't. And for me, if I am simply driving forward, wanting to push forward with that bucket, that grapple, that pusher, I don't think that's too big of a deal. I think you're gonna get the vast majority of your power from the back end. I don't think there's much of a downside, really, if you're just going in a straight line. There's not too much of an increased risk uh, of damaging your tractor or your loader. I don't know how you would ever possibly tip it back over all the way, but there are a couple other variables that come into play. So some of you guys know what the float function is and some of you don't, but let's start with the basic setup, which is if you wanna push that loader joystick forward and get your bucket down to the ground and drop the whole loader down, well, you're gonna be extending this cylinder and there's hydraulic fluid, there's power behind that. And so as you go down and make contact with the ground, eventually it's gonna to wanna to start to dig into the ground. And once you get really good with the loader, which apparently I'm still not there yet, you can actually just fine tune it just enough to maintain that perfect contact with the ground, not dig in, not be up above it, but just find that little sweet spot. Now, for those of us that are not complete masters with our loaders, there's a function that is very handy that will help relieve that pressure so you don't wanna dig down and generally just kinda of glide along the surface. And so that is where the float function comes into play. And so when you are pushing your loader joystick forward, you can keep on pushing. You feel like it might stop, but give it a hard push and see if it kind of pops into a place called detent. And what that is going to do is relieve that hydraulic pressure so there's no longer gonna be hydraulic down pressure. You will still have gravity doing its thing, so the weight of the loader, the weight of the attachment on the loader are still gonna hold it to the ground, but it's gonna do a lot better job gliding along instead of digging in. So the most common time that I am using float is when I'm taking care of a driveway, all right? So typically it's gonna be using a snow pusher, snow plow, something along those lines, and you don't want to cause damage to your driveway. And this is gravel, right? So in this case, that means I wouldn't wanna be scraping off a bunch of gravel, digging down through it, and then just getting that off of the driveway. I wanna leave it right in place. But on the flip side, if you have a paved driveway or a concrete driveway, something you don't want to get damaged, chip off those corners, put some gouges in it, then float can be a very convenient and helpful option there as well. Instead of that down pressure digging in and wanting to really almost try to cause damage unintentionally, you can put it in float 
and it's going to be a lot more likely to kind of glide along and follow the contour of the land. So that all sounds great and it works really well, but float does become a problem when you start to meet a lot of resistance. So once you have a big pile of dirt or a big pile of snow or a big pile of branches that you're picking up with the grapple, at some point, and it's probably different for every tractor, is you're going to reach a point, especially if you're in float, when the tractor almost wants to fold, right? And so the power that's still being generated by those rear tires, those drive tires, are going to almost start to wheel up as the front can't go any further or maybe it's more challenging uh, for the front to go further along and so it just starts to kind of fold up and that's when those front tires come off the ground and so you think the answer to that problem is pretty straightforward you just pop it out of float right but it's actually a little bit more complicated than that now typically if you just pop it out of float all that's going to do is put the pressure back on, right? You're still gonna be in a compromised position all the way down to the ground. And once you've started to raise that front end up, well, it's driving more pressure to the back end and to the front end, all right? So the middle's raising and all your pressure's going kind of like a triangle to the outside. So unless you slightly raise up your front end attachment to get some of that pressure off of here, off of the back end, and put it back on these front tires, you're still gonna have that same problem. And in my defense, I think once you master this sequence and understand what's happening and how to correct this problem, that's when you're on your way to becoming a master operator. So let's demonstrate this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so if you don't notice, we are doing this at a different time of year. Our original footage didn't record for one reason or another. So uh, we're set up here. We're gonna go across my driveway. Gonna do in float first and then no float. You can kind of see an exaggerated hump here on the crown of the driveway. So this should give you a good look at the difference between what float can do versus no float. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna to try to keep my bucket just rocked back a hair so it doesn't dig in everything. Assuming my bucket level indicator is on point. Drop it down. Again, we're in float. Going up the crown right now. You can see the loader just doing its thing, going up and then back down as we go across. Look at that. Not digging in just kind of scraping or sliding right along. All right, we'll back up and we'll do it without float. And you're gonna see a difference in the amount of ground contact. As the tires, the front and rear axle change, as they're going up or down and not staying level, the bucket's either gonna come up above the ground, go down too deep into the ground, maybe drive the front tires off the ground. We'll see. A lot of different things happen, just different dynamics. So here we go. No float this time. I have not changed the bucket angle. Okay, so we're going to drop it down to the ground, make contact. Making contact. No float. Now it's way up off the ground. Down onto the ground. So you can see how, how you have inconsistent ground contact there, you can't do a whole lot. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat, trying to put that bucket completely level on the ground, all right? So like it's going to want to dig in. We had it curled back that front lip so that it didn't dig in. We're going to repeat like we're trying to kind of skim the surface of the ground but not dig way down into it. We'll see if we can uh, show you a difference here. Got that rock forward just a touch. drop down into flow. Has a tendency to want to rock back, try to keep that level. So you can see here, it's just digging right down through. Poor driveway there, feel pretty bad. Let's go ahead and throw that back in there. We got a leveling project, kind of regrading everything. Good opportunity here to show you float and back drag. That's in float. Just kind of control the angle of your bucket there. The curl roll function. See how it kind of does its thing there. That's all just float, controlling the curl roll function. Obviously not ideal, just one pass. Now let's go next to it here 
and we'll do it without float, okay? See what kind of difference we have. Get that bucket just about level there. Again, we're trying to dig in this time, but just see the difference between float and no float. Okay, we're making contact. No float. And there, just wants to keep going way down. I'm spinning my tires here. Can't make any more forward progress without the float. So, so even though we were in float previously and it was still digging the ground, we were trying to dig, but not keep going down and down and down. And so without float, you can see what happens here. The bucket still wants to dig down further, deeper into the ground, and we're at a standstill right now. We can't do anything further. And I'm in float right now. That bucket should be should be pretty level, that front edge, but you can see I'm starting to get light on the front end right now. You can see when your grill, when your hood starts to pop up higher on your loader arms, that's kind of a sign that your front end's getting light there. So as we go in, you can see that, right? Kind of driving into there, and those front tires, they're not doing anything, right? So I can pop back out, get those front tires on the ground. You see if I, I'm in float here, and I just pop back out, nothing happens, right? You gotta lower it down a little bit so you can kind of see, get an idea that those front tires are making contact again, all right? Okay, we're gonna go back into float again and kind of demonstrate, right? You see what's happening, and now imagine this is a, a snow pile, you know, or you're pushing, like what we did last week or a couple weeks ago, we pushed and made this big pile of dirt, you know? And so when this happens, again, pop back out. And pick it up a little bit. You gotta find that sweet spot, right? If you're if you're spinning, it's the wrong thing. You can raise up too. You don't have to take from the bottom of the pile. I'm just trying to clean that up a little bit there. Back up a little bit, okay? We're scraping right down to the grass. Yeah, you can see the bare grass there where where we started out at. Might have cut in a little too deep. I want to show you what happens when you try to turn, okay? We'll put it in float right now, which is fine, all right? Well, let's say you want to get into a pile here and then start turning. Well, look at that. I can go forward, but those tires are off the ground completely. I can't turn at all, right? If I want to turn and like push this pile over to the side at all, I got to get that weight back on the front, right? I got to get it on there. So same thing with a pusher. When you're pushing snow or plowing snow, that extra weight that's in the bucket or on the pusher, on the plow, use that to your advantage to kind of manipulate the weight and make it force down on your front tires there to really get them to make good contact so you can turn. All right, well, I don't really need float for the rest of this pile here. Probably didn't need it for most of it. Maybe just a clean up pass. I, I can see it actually right here, I lied. Get it right there just a little bit to clean that edge of that pile up, I like that. I don't want to dig down, just want to clean it up. Okay. But we'll clean up the rest of this pile. All right, so that should give you a pretty good look there at what the problem was and how to fix it if it happens to you. And really, I think it's just a sign. That means that you're understanding what's happening and occurring with your loader and with your tractor and then how to get back into position. Sometimes if you're going straight forward in a straight line, it's not a big deal at all. Just let those front tires come off and just keep going. If your momentum is continuing, that can be helpful as well versus stopping and, and making an adjustment. But once you get good at it, get the hang of it, you can start to do everything at one time, right? You can keep your motion going forwards or backwards. You can pull it in and out of float as you need to. You can adjust the angle, the curl, the roll function on your buck or your pusher or your grapple. Same thing in raising and lowering. So that raising and lowering of your loader is gonna make a huge difference on maintaining traction here. And even in this 15 minutes of work that we did, moving this pile from point A to point B, there were times parts of this little job that didn't require float at all, but uh, in the beginning, or maybe as that pile was dwindling, or at the very end when I wanted to kind of smooth out the roughed up areas, I really utilized float a lot there and kind of had my bucket edge raised up just a hair so it wouldn't catch and dig down, but just a hair up so it kind of gl glided or glid, glid along, that will go with that, I like glid, and just slid along, that's pretty good. 
and evened it out. We didn't do everything perfectly here right now. It's a muddy mess. I mean, it's winter time, but you get the idea of where it can be handy, where it can be used. And again, besides the bucket, I think it's very applicable to using a snow pusher or a snow plow when you can definitely feel really light on the front end. And I think it's important to note, I didn't talk about it earlier, but this does not apply just to my tractor here, but it's essentially all the modern compacts and subcompact tractors, John Deere, Kubota, Coyote, Mahindra, LS, you name it. They're all set up the same way. They're going to have that float function there on the loader. If you want a more in-depth overview of how you can use float, all the different forms and types and locations of float on your tractor, I actually did a video all about that a while back too. And so there is one other thing you can do to help out with keeping your front end down on the ground. And I've done this on my 1025R. I don't know all the different tractors that you can do it on, but you can add on front weights uh, for me, right on the front frame of the tractor, five 41 pound suitcase weights. So that's an extra 205 pounds hanging up there. That's helping keep that front end on the ground, which are your steering or your turning tires and help you go where you need to go. So for me, I found that weight beneficial, not just for trying to keep that traction, but also when you have Oh, let's say a good example is using a, a bagger on the back when you're doing the leaves in your yard and that back end really wants to pick up when you're trying to turn around and it's very light contact up here. That extra 200 pounds up here really helps counter or offset that weight hanging out back. And so weight in general is gonna be your friend, right? So that's trying to keep weight on the front, trying to keep weight on the back tires, trying to keep weight back here when you're using your front end loader. Weight's just a big deal. Anyway, hopefully you learned a little bit more about how to operate your tractor. You can see how I do it. It's not a perfect science, right? Every application is a little different, but just know you can kind of feather those controls constantly. It'll come natural the more that you do it. But if you did enjoy today's video and you want to see more, I'd love to have you subscribe. There's a button right down below, just click that. And if you want something for your tractor, for the front end, for the three point, maybe that added weight that we talked about, check out goodworkstractors.com. We ship all over the country. So I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.